Do I look like Gabriel to you? <laughs> Woohoo! Hello, YouTubers, and oh man, all those who happen to freaking watch. First off, I'd like to thank my brother, Viper29, which I don't want to say about an exclamation or exclamation to say that he's my brother. I want you to know that by now. But, you know, uh, Sean gave me his uh, high definition camera to use, the uh, DXG model, which is uh, supposed to be a high definition camera. And I, you know, played around with it, tested it and everything, and I noticed that it does do a pretty darn good job of autofocusing a lot now. It doesn't really autofocus that much, it's just if, you, if I move a lot. So if I stand completely still and not do anything, I should be fine. See? It's trying its best to try to focus on me. Ha! But anyway, this video is basically about a technology tag by Monte Carlo. And he asked the community, which some people consider that to be cliche now, which, whatever, right? Most things are cliche as they are. So, Monte Carlo 1025.4 asks, Daniel, why is your body so amazing? And I told him, well, baby, I don't know. Not any related question. Uh, <laughs> what system wowed you in the terms of technology? Well, I was originally going to pick the 386 computer because of the gameplay. You got to play with this little... I remember you playing in this little grayish-white joystick and it had like a button on top of it. And the gameplay for that just blew my nuts off because it was just the game just so simple and fun. But, you know, seeing that you can't technically pick a computer and I don't have a 386 in my house that I can show off, I went with my second choice. The Sega Genesis because of the stereo sound it provided versus the you know the Nintendo which didn't provide the you know the stereo sound you always get that one ear sound with the Sega Genesis model one here you got you know the whole stereo sound games look so cool you know I remember seeing like Sonic played for the first time I was just like Whoo! you know blown away by it and it's just a really mind-blowing experience for me when I was a child because I just thought the game was just ridiculously fun. Granted, though, I wasn't spoiled on the premise of gameplay, though, because of the fact that a game's about get playing games and it necessarily isn't always about the, uh, you know, the graphics or anything like that. So when I first played Sonic, that's the gameplay was what really blew me away more than anything else. Uh, so the graphics, of course, the first impression was like, wow, that's a lot. Because I never really noticed a Nintendo at all when I was a kid. You know, I was just like a diaper, just walk around going, oh, well, what the fuck is this? You know, I just... <laughs> so, you know, it was this in the uh, Sega Master System, I'd have to say, that were my first wow factors, though, gameplay. I think it was that so Sega basically, you know, pushed that envelope, and Nintendo was just like... I mean, granted, some of the Nintendo games are really great gameplay. It's just this was the first impressions, which just blew my brains off. And the crazy thing about this console is it still works. Oops, dropped it. No, not really. All right. Question number two: Where do you get think video game technology will be from now in ten years? Well, I'm speaking in my my full unbiased opinion of. What I think is going to happen in ten years, I think it's going to have we're going to have ourselves another video game crash. Like I just see it happening. It's the fact that you know gaming companies, you know they're getting hectic with these these procedures to you know make it anti piracy. So much so you're alienating and pissing off those who have been dedicated to buying your product. So you're going to see a crash where some console or something is going to come out there and save. Just save it. I mean, history's going to repeat itself sooner or later, right? I mean, who knows? And, you know, in 10 years, I, I'm going to see a lot of spoiled, rotten brats when it comes to video games as well because, you know, technology to get more advanced. You can handle more people's opinions. And the gaming companies, the only thing they're going to hear about is graphics, 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 graphics. So you're going to see games, I mean, you're going to see gems here and there, but you're going to see games just 
turning into something that's more about graphics than gameplay even more now it's just you're gonna see some games you know that have that total package you know the the, the concept the storyline the gameplay then the graphics following after you're gonna see all that but that's gonna be dime a few and most of those games that are are dime a few are gonna be overshadowed by games that are just most likely generic asshole like rebirths of some stupid ass games like modern warfare you know, Black Ops, for example, I see that in 10 years, you know, no one's going to give a fuck about that game, but it's going to be the craze and the hype of now. I mean, some people still argue about uh, this being outdated versus the, the uh, Nintendo, sorry, the Nintendo Wii and the 360 and the PS3. And I look at this and I bust my ass off laughing because while these compact disc games, like the 360 and all that, are going to lose their premise, lose their shape and form because nowadays most games... And I'm saying this boldly, most games are mostly based off multiplayer. And you see full well that most of these games get shoved off after that three-month shelf life. And another game comes up to replace it. And then it becomes a, a redundant $60 purchase a freaking time just to play something. Then EA is going to have the ball sack to say, well, we're going to charge a $10 tag. Well, just be lucky someone's trying to jump on your servers after so long too, jerk. But, again, I digress. Uh, ten years from now, it's going to be the same redundant shit. I mean, is, I mean, the only thing that's really, I see, that are really enheightening is the indie, the indo, uh, the independent circuit, rather. I, I was trying to use the, the metaphor for the, you know, the short, but I'll just say independent scene. I see that the independent scene is doing better than the uh, popular scene. I mean, hell. Let's look at Minecraft. That's an independent company that's uh, running around with that right now. And they're doing successful. They're doing very good. I mean, they're not quite doing the million dollar a day mark yet that I've seen. But they're getting up there. And I congrat congrats them for being really well developed. You know, the game's fun. It's addicting. It's simple. I mean, most of these games, they try to go with these over-advanced controls and everything. And 10 years from now... Controllers are just going to be so advanced that you're going to see like buttons here, there, here, there, there, here, and there, and there, and here, and here. And you're going to be basically what they're going to the controls the game is going to tell you is slam your fist into the controller to shoot. I mean, you're already doing that anyway when you're playing Halo Reach or something. You're like, son of a bitch, son of a fuck, 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 fuck fucking kick with the goddamn. You know, just just cussing your brains out, you know. And by the way, that was fake anger, so don't even take think that, oh, he's just getting angry, derp. No, um, but that's where I see 10 years from now. It's just going to get worse, or they're going to cater to kids. Like, granted, you know, Nintendo Wii does that much more than anything else, because that's the better market. But, you know, sadly, so a bunch of kids are going to say, oh, the graphics look like shit on this game. So, so basically, games that have good gameplay get overshadowed. So, I see that's going to get worse than it is now. But, alright, I kind of dabbed on two more than anything else. Alright, question number three. If you could make a video game console, what would you do with it and what would you add to it? Alright, so this question is quite simple. I already thought it out. And I would make a console that it wouldn't be about graphics. I'd, I mean, granted, it would have the capabilities of running games that had very good graphics. It wouldn't be, you know, alienating the, the concept of graphics. I mean, hell, I don't think anyone's really play text games anymore, except those people who role-play a lot and wear furry costumes. But, you know, I'm going to make a console that is simple to play. The controls aren't overbearing. The controls are accessible to those who are of um, disabled agent. Because, let's face it, someone who usually plays with a control like this, and they have like a crutch on or something like this, or they have, you know, they lost an arm in a war or something like that. I make a controller that you can practically play with one side of the controller. You don't have to worry about the second half. Or you can just, you know, adapt to how you like to play. So if you're one of those type of gamers who just likes to play like this, you would have those options and it would be very easy. You know, something like that. I would think outside the box. And when it comes to my console, it would be, I would focus towards independent companies. I wouldn't. I mean, yeah, if EA wants to put their cut in there, I'd tell them, well, guess what, asshole? Your games are not going to sell my console. My console is going to sell itself. So I'd pretty much have independent companies 
be able to have huge shares in their product and be able to sell their product on my console and successfully make a game on the console without the limitations. When it comes to multiplayer, I would make it mostly 100% dedicated where there wouldn't be no server sucks because the company's fault it would not be our fault it would be your problem because it'd be on your connection and i'd make wouldn't make sure that'd be bold and we'll make it so that way you can actually host from your console on your computer what your servers are doing if people are giving you shit or treating you like ass you would have like this client that you can see what these people are doing on your computer and just click the button get rid of them and terminate them permanently you know, think of all these things outside the box and be able to, you know, provide a product for the com for the uh, consumer that they would have a great experience and actually play games that actually have a long bearing on them, a lot of replayability. I wouldn't necessarily totally depend on games that, you know, were disc based. I mean, the console will have disc base. I would probably try to cater to every single. Uh, media that was out like probably the red uh, ray player or this x ray player or the bl purple x-ray player whatever comes out there you know i would cater to all those con those um specific disc formats and on top of that i would actually have a client so people could actually host an os on there and when it comes to pirating i would pretty much give people the right to do that because it'd be their console now people are just like the console wouldn't sell yes it would because if people have that freedom they would be excited about buying this console they wouldn't care I mean granted this might be a little dismeaning to certain companies but we'll make a restriction on that we say we'll let you pirate or do certain games if you have a legible CD key for it then you can obviously go on there and grab your game and put it up on there or if you have abandonware games like DOS box you can put it up on the consoles people just said oh if you can pirate, that's not even well thought out. Yes, it is. Because the companies are able to have access to, let's say, for instance, they see a specific code inside the person's console, and they see that that person downloaded on that person's console, they would legibly have the right to either deny the person of service the game or what. So, I mean, granted, the, the, uh, there would be no pub, like, there would be no public eyesight for people's consoles but there'll be enough for the console companies to see or the gaming companies to see how their product's doing and if they see that you know this this client this person's accessing this game through a a hacked means they can able to just shut them down i mean people can play in single player because you know i ain't gonna stop them because you know what it's up to the companies again to think of ways that i mean these independent companies to think of ways that you know how they're gonna get their products safe it's not my responsibility or the, you know, my company's responsibility to make sure these company games are safe. It's up to the gaming companies. So we're not we're not going to stop them, but the companies will have full responsibility to stop these people from stealing their product. That's fair, right? So overall, that's how I think about my console. So that's pretty much answering all three of my questions the best way possible. I'd make it fully accessible to independent companies. I'd also make it accessible for people to upload DOS box and you know games like this from the Sega Genesis, the the, the Nintendo, and the you know all the all the older consoles within reason for free, as long as of course there's no copyright rate on them. So other than that, I hope this answers your questions, and uh, take it easy, folks, and uh, make sure to check out Monte Carlo 1025 Four. As for myself, take care.